Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back. And we are starting a new podcast series. This is going to be over four days, maybe five. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. It's all about negotiating. Now, we have talked about negotiating a lot in the past in this podcast, and obviously it's a real drill down focus in our Premier Coaching program, which by the way, if you've not yet joined Premier Coaching, you can do so for free. Just go to premiercoaching.com, premiercoaching.com, or if you'd like, you can just text um, Premier to 47372 and you can join Premier Coaching for free. But what we've realized from all the communications we get from you guys on a regular basis is that a lot of you really don't have a clue, and it's understandable, frankly, how to negotiate. Why? Because this past seller's market has absolutely spoiled you. You have in the past, when working with a buyer, when it came to negotiating, it was not a lot of skills. Do you want the house? Okay, then you pay whatever the seller wants plus a whole bunch. And you do what they tell you to do. Exactly. When they tell you to do it. Right. And all the little clauses in the contract about uh, you know appraisal inspections and home inspections and all the rest of this. Nope, remove those. Yeah, wave the whole thing. Exactly. And if you're on this, if you're on the listing agent side, the listing agents, you didn't need a lot of negotiation skills. It was basically just bring your highest and best offer, and then you'd get a whole bunch of all cash offers coming in at over asking price. And I know in some markets it's still like that. We have coaching clients in Florida that are experiencing upticks, upticks like that. And here's another little advanced coaching lesson for all of you. Even in 2007, 2008, 2009, I mean, Julie and I have been in real estate since the mid-90s, but we've been through four major housing corrections, nothing like the one in 07, but there were still pockets of housing in every community in the United mm-hmm. States that were still selling as if it was a, a, you know, essentially a rabid seller's market. And that will always be true. Um, you know, There's lots of examples of areas where there would be like a whole community where there would be essentially a, a, a buyer's market. And yet- there was one neighborhood with maybe like 100 houses and if, say on the one uh, section of that particular neighborhood, those houses would sell for list price, you know, even sometimes more than list price. At the same time, the world was mm-hmm. trying to convince all of you that everyone is going to give up home ownership and start living in caves. You guys get it? So there are always going, there's always going to be real, uh, you know, fantastic seller's market, even in markets where it feels mostly like it's a balanced or a buyer's market. But you got to know all these things when you're negotiating because every single um, you know agent that's listing, if you've not been in the business for more than 15 years, if you were not productive in selling real estate even 15 years ago, uh, you don't really know how to negotiate into a market like what we're experiencing. And we see that from your comments. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the next four days and we're going to give you guys as much drill down information we can in the 20 to 30 minutes we set aside every day for this podcast. That's right. So negotiation happens not only when the offer is made, countered, and hopefully accepted, but also during home inspections. I know some of you freak out over that because you haven't had to do it yet, but it's huh. coming to a listing near you. Also during home inspections, appraisal issues, defending your commission, that's a negotiation, and many other times before your clients finally make it to the closing table. I will say also, Julie, uh, that negotiation actually starts in a market like this. When you, let's just say on the listing side, when you take the listing, Mm -hmm. when you take the listing, you need to start priming the seller to negotiate because most sellers have been spoiled if they've only owned real estate for, again, last 15 years or less. They have only been selling in a hot seller's market, and they have this you know, mindset that the buyers are going to take it or leave it. So you're going to have to start coaching and training them in order to, uh, you know, so that they're willing to negotiate when the time comes. And the same goes on the buyer side of things. So the actual negotiation happens when you initiate the conversation with a client so that they then have the expectation that when they actually are being transactional, when they're getting a, you know, essentially something in contract, they're going to have to lean into the deal more than maybe they think so. And uh, that's a really important thing because a lot of you, what do you say to buyers? 
you know what, we're going to beat the seller over the, you know, this is a market that the sellers are completely on their heels and the buyers are in complete control. Mm -hmm. Nope, wrong. Or you're going to say to the sellers, you know what, we're going to basically beat the buyers over. You guys have, these are the dumb things that basically you've gotten away with selling because or gotten away with saying because the past market was a FOMO market, fear of missing out. Now you actually have to have skill. So here's a little known fact. Even the most experienced agents can still have moments of anguish or anxiety in real estate situations. Maybe they're in a higher price range than they're used to, dealing with a seller with a strong personality, or just can't see eye to eye on key points. It happens to everybody. Newer inexperienced agents dread running up against a tough negotiator, that could be another agent, or your own client. A buyer or a seller just won't seem to budge or an agent that they can't seem to communicate with. So let's everybody write down what even is negotiation. The definition of negotiation is the following. The process where two or more parties with different needs and goals discuss and find a mutually acceptable solution. It is not the bludgeoning of the other side, making them cry, getting them to hang up on you, faking them out, or other obnoxious non-tactics. Avoid this language and beware of agents or clients who lead with these types of conversations. So the following strategies over a four-part, maybe more, we'll see how many bonus points we roll out, right, (laughs) Um, will help you find the mutually acceptable solution you're looking for when you do negotiate. We're going to discuss both the buyer side and the seller side as we examine those points together. And those uh, four parts are going to be knowing the property, knowing the seller, know the buyer, and do the deal. Remember, knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear. So the more you know going in, the easier, the smoother your transaction is going to go. So part one is get the facts. Knowledge equals confidence. What do you know about the subject property? Now, this can apply to both buyer and seller sides, right? So know all you can about the subject property. Whether you're on the listing side or the buyer side, here are the facts to gather before you start negotiating. And bonus coaching clients, the negotiation checklist is included in Premier Coaching. Now, Mark Twain said, quote, supposing is good, but finding out is better. So we can rely on him. But also, Julie, this your points about actually doing homework on, you know, knowing what you're dealing with prior to actually dealing mm-hmm. with it is something, again, that agents have never learned how to do or thought they had to do sure. because of the nature of the previous market. You want it, you better, you know, write a Pony contract, up. wherever the, mm-hmm. the seller wants, plus, plus, plus. And, and, it, and on the seller side of things... You knew the you know house may have been supposed to be listed at six fifty, but the seller wanted seven fifty. You listed it, and guess what? It ended up selling for eight twenty five. You have been spoiled again. I'm not trying to you know belabor this point too much, but you've got to set aside the expectations that any of the things that you've done in the past to get contract uh, deals and contract will work in this new market. And here's the real thing I want you to think about. When it comes to negotiating, when it comes to working with your buyers and your sellers, when they see you're taking a professional approach, when they, you know, when you're following Julie's notes here and they're actually, you're actually showing the client that you're actually doing homework and you're actually making the effort to make it so the outcome is positive, they're going to remember that. They're going to respect that. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you in their eyes are going to instantly be elevated to a status that will make you their realtor for life. They will make it so they'll send you referrals. These are the little nuanced differences that make it so that you truly can become the agent that you've hoped to always become because of, guess what, skills. That's right. So point number one, again, we're talking about knowing as much as you can about the property. All of today is about the property. So point number one, read all of the MLS description, including extended comments and agent comments. And if you're the listing agent, make sure you're putting in those comments where it's necessary. Many times the listing agent will actually state exactly what it will take for the seller to consider your offer. If not, call the agent and find out what the seller's priorities are. Don't assume that it's just the price. And if you're on the listing side, buyer agents, you're about to love me. If you're on the listing side and you're not answering the phone and you're not talking to a buyer's agent and you're not answering questions, you're not coaching those buyer's agents how to write acceptable offers, you are not doing your job. The seller expects you to do that. 5,000%. Exactly. And for you guys to be ignoring the calls from the people that are bringing the offers to purchase the house that you have for sale, if you ignore those calls, you're not going to not only not represent that seller, but you're probably going to end up essentially not getting the best offer on behalf of your seller. Thus, you are being incompetent at your job. Don't be lazy. Yes. And I know the buyer's agents are loving you right now. (laughs) Biggest complaint they have about listing agents. All right. Number two, notice if there are any details listed like... 
not FHA approved, especially on condos, or seller financing may be available, or seller to contribute up to $5,000 towards buyer's closing costs or points, or as is, those types of things. Okay, not FHA approved. What does that mean? There's an FHA approved list. That's right. So really to, to sort of put that in a nutshell, usually it's on condos where it is only FHA approvable, which is usually a smaller down payment and more lenient ratios and all the rest. Usually you can only do that if there's not a ton of rental properties in there, that it's not mostly investor owned. And I believe it's uh, 22%, 25%, something like that. Now, here's the thing. Not all listing agents know this and no. they haven't had to for a long time. So make sure you're, I, I would even go to say on that, if you are selling any condos or, you know, townhomes to find out, to ask that question and, and to find out before it's too late. Those of you in California and Palm Desert, Arizona, other places where there's land leases, oftentimes owned by uh, Indian tribes, you've got to be knowing whether or not the land lease is going to have enough time on it so the person can get a mortgage. For example, if you are purchasing a condo in like a lot of Laguna Beach, believe it or not, you're going to see that some of the, there's land leases that went for a hundred years, but guess what? We're down to the final 25 years on some of those land leases. You will not find anybody that's going to be willing to loan money on a property that has less than 25 years left on the loan. Well, they might do a five-year loan, but they sure as hell aren't going to do a 30-year loan. You guys get it? And they're not going to do it with a low down payment. Because what happens is the property, remember uh, Tim and Julie saying, don't build your castle on land you don't own? Well, guess what? There's a lot of real estate around the United States and the world, by the way. A lot of Europe is on land leases mm -hmm. where they have done just that. They've built these, uh, Julie, like, keeps on literally <laughs> yeah houses condos on land they don't own so you will make your house payment all those expected you know all those things and then you have a land lease payment where you're paying some family that's owned that land for a billion years most likely and i think in england julie mm -hmm. almost all the land leases are owned by um now it's the king of england yes that's true yeah so the, the moral of the story you think your hoa is tough you have to use the white color of yeah, paint you remember that. that that royal family has owned probably for thousands of years well now you've okay yeah, so we're, we're gonna have to tip our hat to our nerdism okay yeah. so when you're in london and you're seeing all of or look at pictures you'll see these pictures of these um, like row houses row houses right brick row houses that are all you know we call them condos right or townhomes and they're all painted white well every one of those that's painted white is owned by the royal family and those people are on land lease and so they might own the real estate i said it wrong they own the the people owning them own the real estate but the royal family owns the actual ground that the real estate sits on you guys get it yes. so you got to know this otherwise you're going to be writing an offer on something and maybe most likely the listing agent doesn't even know because a lot of listing agents aren't experienced in this mm -hmm. market either and you're not going to ever going to be able to get a loan approval on it because it's on a land lease there is a list you can get it if you do not work with a you know fannie mae freddie Mac, fha lender you need to find one that is approved to work with those government loans so that they can essentially pre-qualify all your buyers and then they'll also base, uh, give you a list of the properties that are not uh, FHA approved. That's some advanced coaching, uh -huh. trying to avoid you guys the heartbreak of working a long time to get a property. Now, what if you're going out on a listing appointment and you don't realize that your condo is not FHA approved or if it's on a land lease, you have all these, star, uh, you know, cards stacked against you before you even take the listing and the seller just happens to forget to tell you all the reasons why the property will never sell. You just wasted your time and you've wasted your money. You guys get the importance of having the facts, skills. That's right. Point number three, run the history or archive as some MLSs call it on the property. Also search Zillow, Google, and even YouTube to see if it may have been a for sale by owner prior to being listed. This search should take you about five minutes or less, but it could mean the difference between winning or losing. You need to know the history. Is this a house that the seller's been jockeying around up and down the price range to see what's going to stick? Did it expire two or three times? Did they try and sell it on their own for two years previously? You've got to get the facts. Well, you heard what Julie just said. Go back in time. Run all the history since day one when the thing was a lot as much as you can, right? And find out, have they tried to put it for sale before? Because sometimes what you're going to see as a seller who is maybe the market is, maybe they're elevating the price, or maybe they're lowering the price, but don't just assume that you have all the answers. Maybe the reason that was listed before and they took it off the market is because they made improvements to it. You guys get it? Mm -hmm. Or maybe they had it listed before, 
for whatever reason, they lost their motivation. Maybe they were going to build and the, for whatever reason that didn't work out. But now they're in contract again on a new construction. And then, by the way, this goes back to uh, you know knowing how to pre-qualify. And now they're really, truly motivated to sell. You guys get all this? Which could explain a price reduction or something like that. So point number four, find out the days on the market so far. Is this a fresh listing or has it been on and off the market previously? Has the price been raised or lowered? Has it been pending before and gone back on the market? What caused that? Inspection problems, appraisal issues? It's okay to call the listing agent and find out. And again, to Tim's previous point, listing agents, answer those questions. Okay, so there's the ball of wax right there. Yes. Again, I'm a, in my mind, is firing off, right? If you, listing agent, have a house that falls out of contract because it had a crappy inspection... And your seller now knows of the problems of the house that they did not know prior to the inspection. They sure as hell better update the um, the problem. The, no, the property. The, the, oh, the, the property disclosure, disclosure form. Right. Yes. They better update the property disclosure form. And if they don't, and you knew it wasn't updated, you will be held liable. Well, there's something to know. Okay. How about this one? In certain types of mortgages, and you're you're the one with 14 real estate licenses, so you'll remember this. <laughs> yeah. If a house is appraised. I think it's Fannie Mae again, uh -huh. Fannie Freddie Mac, right? Uh -huh. The appraisal stays with the house even if the deal falls out of contract. So if uh, you know you put a house in contract for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, the buyer basically is going to get FHA approval or FHA financing. It goes through the appraisal process. The buyer changes their mind. Whatever happens, that appraisal sticks to that house. I don't care how much the seller thinks the house is worth more than what the appraisal was. If the next buyer wants to get Fannie or you know government financing, which by the way most people are going to use government financing for the next ten mm -hmm. years, you're going to soon discover that that is the price. Does not matter how much the seller wants more for the property. And if the buyer wants the property and the buyer has the cash. And the house appraises for six fifty, and the seller will sell it for seven, even though the uh, bank will is only allowed to loan six fifty. The buyer is going to have to write a check for the difference. And some buyers can, and some buyers cannot. Well, most buyers won't because they're going to have a lot of opportunity for other properties that are, frankly, where the sellers are going to price them correctly. That's right. Now that uh, appraisal does not stick to the property forever, and no. they do change the time frame from time to time. It's either ninety days or six months, but you do have to pay attention to that. Okay, so. Point number five, very important. What are the actual comparable sales for this property? The most recent solds and pendings. Remember, you're in a changing market and not everything is acting the same way anymore. So the recent solds and pendings, how many days on the market did those homes take to sell? What is the list to sell price ratio? Are these numbers going up or down? And again, that's a point for both listing agents and buyer's agents. I've been doing a lot of coaching lately with buyers who believe that, you know, they read headlines, they see things going on, they think they're supposed to be lowballing, and sellers whose next door neighbor's house just sold for, you know, 10,000 over lists, so they th they're going to stick to their guns. So how do you meet in the middle? Well, that is called negotiating, and the way you go about it is different. If you've got three recent comps that all sold for over 100% of list price and had three days on the market, well, how you're going to go about that is different then if the house that you're bidding on has already been on the market for 100 days, the last two in the neighborhood sold six months ago and they took forever to sell and they didn't sell for 100% of list. You've got to set your expectations both on the listing side and on the buyer side. Okay, so next, point number six, what is the active competition? Now, why does this matter? Here's the question. Does the buyer have zero other choices? Do they have a few choices or do they have lots of choices versus the subject property? Is there new construction in the area? How does the subject property compare? Note to self, if there are very few competing homes or no competing homes, you can always expect to pay more, or if you're the listing agent, you take more, not less, unless it's been on the market for excessive days for whatever reason. And if that's the case, again, find out why. But if you're the only thing and you've got competing offers, well, you know, it would be dumb to lowball that house, right? Now, this goes back to the first point. You need to be priming your buyers and your sellers for actually the new rules with regards to negotiation. And we're just, you know, essentially going over the very surface of a lot of these now. Because you need to explain to, for example, the buyers that, you know, if we are looking at a property that you want to purchase and we see the other properties that have been for sale have sold in 22 seconds, guess what? That seller of the property you want to buy knows that it's a hot seller's market. Do not think you're going to roll in there and you're going to steal the house. I don't care what your CNN headline is telling you is going on in the housing right. market. It's not relevant. And this is, again, the problem that a lot of you guys are going to have to deal with is a lot of ill-informed consumers about what's actually happening in the housing market. Well, that's true. And even in a changing market that's a 
a bit more balanced. There's a difference how you negotiate or would expect to negotiate. If a listing just came on last night and you saw it today and you want to make an offer, even if you're the only offer, what's going on in that seller's mind maybe? I priced it too low. I priced it too low. Oh my gosh, that used to drive us crazy. Yeah. Oh, if we're already getting an offer, we must need to take it. Well, let's put it on the market for another two open houses and see what happens. Right? And remember on the listing side of things, you're going to run into sellers like that. They're going to be all, you know, yes. Julie and I are just looking at each other kind of, you know, grimacing because we suffered through some sellers like that when we sold real estate yeah. and we suffered vicariously through, you know, sellers that a lot of our coaching clients have mm-hmm. had. And the sellers don't realize what they just did is win the real estate lottery. Of course, you know, their greed bone is being tickled and now they're being aspirational yeah. with their That's pricing. True. But, you know, tomorrow's listing might have been on the market. Frust- you know, maybe that seller is frustrated because they had a few nibbles. They waited too long. They should have taken an offer. Now it's four months on the market. And you know what that seller says when you write an offer that's pretty reasonable? Just get it done. That's, that's what right. they say to their listing agent. Well, right? you know, there's this is definitely true. We talk about this in our coaching program. It's not quite to the point where it's a buyer's market. It's a balanced market in most of the markets, but almost always the first offer you get, the first viable offer, I should say, almost always that's the best offer you're going to receive. Waiting doesn't help. Now, I will give you guys this as a little kind of, you know, frankly, a mental Rubik's Cube that Julie and I do not have the answer for. Inflation is going to screw up everything with regards to pricing. Because what happens is inflation rate, if it increases, which it does appear it's going to, there's no going back to 2% in probably our lifetimes. The new normal probably going to be over 5%. But what does appear to be brewing right now is inflation is actually going to start increasing primarily on real estate. Inflation is a lot of, you know, similar characteristics to appreciation. So you could then from a, you know, lead generation perspective, you can go list a house that just expired and all your competing agents are beating on the seller saying, you lower the price, lower the price. But you know that the the inflation on real estate in the last say, you know, 90 days has been actually, uh, you know, five or 6%. And you can actually not only not lower the price, but maybe even raise that price and then sell it for a higher price. These are all the things you've got to learn how to do. Remember skills-based market, This is a market where you can actually absolutely have a feast because of the fact that you have the skill set, primarily with the mindset of being of service to other people. Okay, our last point today is number seven. What else is important about this property? Is it in the floodplain? Is it in an area that's extremely competitive due to maybe a corporation moving into town? What's going to happen to that field behind the house? (laughs) Are they really going to bury the power lines soon? Remember in Laguna, it was always, ah, they're going to bury the power lines one day. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is all included in our pre-negotiation checklist for our premier coaching members. If you're not taking notes fast enough, and this is the 30,000-foot overview, this is not the true drill down. That's right. And we're in a hypersonic plane because we only have 30 minutes to go from coast to coast, right? Um, So, guys, listen. Join Premier Coaching. It's very simple. Just go to premiercoaching.com, premiercoaching.com, and you can join right now for free. Just go to premiercoaching.com. It takes you two seconds. You can key it into your phone. You can join right over your phone. Hundreds of you do every single month. Just go to premiercoaching.com. Listen, we sincerely appreciate over all the great five-star reviews you guys have been giving us on iTunes. Um, and it is still our birthday month, so technically it is not too late for Julie, uh, for you guys to give Julie and I a birthday present of a five-star review and a piffy comment on iTunes. It's very simple. If you've never done it before, just you're listening on iTunes right now, chances are. Just scroll to the bottom, and you're going to see five stars. Click it so all five stars are lit up, and then put in a little comment. That's all we want you to do. It takes five seconds. We sincerely appreciate it. We are moving on to day two tomorrow, part two, day two. Get ready to take a lot of great notes. We're going to get into really the heart of the the matter and what the difference is between essentially an agent who gets the impossible deal on contract and the one that essentially doesn't even know that they what they don't know. That is what tomorrow and the following day's shows are about. Thank you for keeping this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. Have a fantastic day. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.